Thank you for inviting me to talk about PhoneFlare, a safety application that works on college campuses here in the villages and without some special features, frankly, everywhere in the United States. My son, Christopher Sankmars Jarvis, is the developer of this app. He wrote the code, made it open source, and did all the marketing graphics for his project. Christopher graduated from NYU in film at 24. Christopher won 52 film awards around the world. He was even nominated for a Student Academy Award and was voted the most promising young film director at Telluride in Colorado. He is now 27. I gave birth to him kind of late. <laughs> the application is new. It can be downloaded on your iPhone or Android, Android phones. The website is www.phoneflare.com. I'm frankly not sh quite sure what I did wrong, but my son is altogether not interested in making money. PhoneFlare is totally free. If you would like to see all of his free, applic free applications and films, his website is www.jarvisfilms.com. Sorry, I'm a little bit, there you go. So PhoneFlare is truly nonprofit, volunteer run, or it's an organization where no one is paid. There is no revenue. Google gave a grant of $120,000 as a credit against the uh, marketing costs, so it's just a debt that offsets it. Twilo agreed to cut their costs significantly for the expense of using their services and provided a $3,000 grant. PhoneFlare is also on Kickstarter. So I've given each of you a packet, and inside that packet, uh, is a few dust plugs, my card, in case you would like to ask me to give you more of them for your friends and family. Now notice that I even put a label here on this little package so you can actually mail it out to your friends and family. Let's look at the dust plug. Because this is an Apple computer group, I'm going to assume that you know where this goes. Okay, dust plugs come in all designs. They are used as charms by the younger generation. In this case, it is functional. You put the phone flare dust plug in the headphone jack of your phone. I would like to say clearly that your headphones work to achieve the same result. Our dust plug is a backup to your headphones. I personally don't carry headphones with me, so I put my phone fair plug on my keychain key to remind me that I have it. So who pays for all of this? The dust plugs, I do. Average cost is 22 cents, but I'm not telling you that to discourage you. You can distribute as many cards and plugs as you like. We would be grateful for your support. Just email me or call me. I also brought extra cards and plugs if you would like to share these with your village friends. Save your envelope for your family. Please see me after this meeting if you'd like to take additional ones with you. Now let's watch a very short trailer on phone flare. It covers lots of information, so I'm going to go slowly and go, every, oh, oh, go over everything again. Now here we go. PhoneFlare is a free, nonprofit app that texts friends and family your location if you're in danger. It even calls your school safety dispatch if you're on campus to let them know where you are. Trigger an emergency by ripping an accessory from the headphone port, or by missing a check-in time you set in advance. PhoneFlare is entirely free, volunteer-run, and open source. The first thing you need to do is to load the application. Once loaded, you're asked if you live in the villages, and if you do, you enter your ID and password. College campuses are the only other institution that has the special feature of having to log in, give a password, because we are interested in, as I will explain later, knowing where you are, your GPS location. 
The next thing you do is you need to submit up to five contacts. Let me walk you through a scenario. It's late. Your granddaughter is walking home from class and she decides to arm her, fo fo her phone. It's simple. All she does is arm her, arm her fo phone by going to the, the application and setting the arm button. So connect headphones or an, arm ex or an accessory and hit the arm button above to prime your device for an emergency. She senses someone is following her. Now she's getting more worried as her follower picks up the step and with words or actions makes her feel like something could go wrong. What does she do? She pulls the, uh, her, her headphone or dust plug from her phone and immediately her phone sends a message to her contacts. I may be in danger, please stay with me. Her GPS location is updated every uh, 15 seconds until she's safe. Now let me stop here for a minute. I didn't realize that my son was testing his app when I first got this text 10 months ago. My heart stopped. So please list your contacts carefully. So now the plug is pulled. Now the microphone is activated and her message is recorded on her phone for legal reasons. This message is not kept on the server. It's kept on her phone. Once you download the app it, and register, you'll then want to go to your settings and program the features that are most important to you. You get to pick. And here are some of the options. The SOS torch. It has an option to flash the SOS signal out of the flashlight of your cell phone. Audio alarm can be turned on or off, making it possible to have an audible sound during the emergency record audio. When your Bluetooth is enabled, your phone will scan a log nearby smart devices during your emergency. What does this mean exactly? You have a built-in feature where Bluetooth just recognizes on its own who is around you. Once again, this information is not recorded on the servers. It records on your phone and anyone who is around you that has their Bluetooth on also. This may include your assailant. So in short, everyone gets tagged that is nearby. So we were talking about the options and thank you. So there's the SOS torch, the audio alarm, the record audio. And I talked to Christopher a few days ago and he's working on an actual video that he wants to implement in this uh, text, in this pr project. Um, next, the multicolor disarm. This, this lets you trigger silent emergencies and verifies your identity. If your protagonist makes you shut off the alarm, you pick and pick you pick another color that they want that you programmed as being safe the phone goes quiet but the phone really is still active and the alarm is still active there's security dispatch and that is only available on campuses and I'll explain that a little bit later but it's definitely available in, in the entire villages so our entire system knows where you are GPS wise if you have an emergency in the villages. So if you're in the villages or near any campus that is enrolled, phone flare notifies, notifies your school of your location and status. 800 plus colleges are available now. So if a college is not in the database and there's a request, Christopher makes sure that the college or university is listed. Just contact sankmarsmedia at gmail.com to ask us to enlist a college or university. Now here's how you de-escalate de an emergency. Choose the button that says you're okay. By doing the following, once you confirm you're safe, everyone is notified. GPS access for contacts and campus safety stops. Another feature is check-in time. At a time when you would like to check back with phone flare, by hitting the press button, if you fail to check in within a five minute grace period, 
your contacts will be reached. Now that's important for, you know, if you have a father or mother that's kind of aged, you can set up a, a check-in time for them. Now I'm going to ask a whole bunch of questions just because you might be shy and not know, not want to ask me. So I'll just ask some questions and answer them. How, how does the app know when I'm in danger? Three different ways. You can declare an emergency manually. You can rip the headphones or an, an accessory out of the audio jack or charging port, almost like an emergency cord on a treadmill. In fact, that's where he got his idea. You can set a time to check in with your phone. When the time comes, your phone will remind you to check in with increasing urgency for minutes until finally an emergency is triggered. What is sent to my contacts when I'm in trouble? Your email address. Is this really free? Yes. There are no charges of any kind for users or institutions. How do you, how do you make money? We don't. Our nonprofit does not pay any of our volunteers or administrators a salary of any kind. My son makes no money. He's not worried. How do you spend donations? Every penny goes towards server maintenance, auto texting, and calling, co calling costs, manufacturing, free accessories, and promotion of the app in that order. What happens when you contact my school and how do you do it? We have a massive crowdsourced dat database that relates your e EDU affixed to your school, its emergency dispatch number, and geo boundary of your campus or the villages. If your location is inside the geo bound, our server calls, and Michelle Tra Trachenberg's voice relays critical information to them like reverse geo coded location, email address, and the URL to your updated location over time. You get to hear my voice if you have an emergency in the villages. Can I use phone flare with a non-EDU address? Yes. Is my privacy protected? The app sends anonymous error reports to help developers. We also anonymously collect the locations and times of emergencies with the intention of making a geo model of how different communities and campus evolve with respect to safety and hope to share this with the Department of Education. All personal information of any kind, including your name, email, account credentials, are kept 100% encrypted and private, even from volunteers who code our app. Can you guarantee my safety? Absolutely not. It is our sincere hope that PhoneFlare can be used as a tool and contribute to an important dialogue on the prevention of sexual assault on campuses but it is by no means a fail, a fail safe. Always have a backup hit plan or two. What if someone happens, uh, what happens if someone forces me to disarm? I mentioned that there's a built-in feature to address coercion. You have the option of selecting a color needed to disarm. If the wrong color is chosen, it acts as a sort of silent alarm, making it look like the device has been disarmed when help is really on the way. When safe, you can disarm uh, online later. Um, because you're all iPhone people, you're probably wondering, what about the iPhone 7? There's no headphone jack. Well, phone flare works perfectly well with the uh, iPhone 7. Anything in the lightning port, including lightning headphones, will work just fine. Why don't you call 911 on behalf of users? Well, this was the original intent of phone flare, but then we found out that there were laws preventing the auto dialing of 911 dispatch in the United States. This is why home security systems have an intermediary service that calls 911 on your behalf once they determine you're in danger. I don't want campus safety notified of my location. You have the ability to opt out of that as one of the options in the app, but most colleges have Good Samaritan laws where minor infractions, including underage drinking and recreational drug use, are excused in situations that are in the interest of public safety. Phone flare logs UDIDs. What does that mean? Remember we talked about the Bluetooth 
and if it's turned on, PhoneFlare will scan nearby dev devices and save their Bluetooth IDs. It's possible that with this information, you could pro prove that an assailant was, a, was within 30 feet of you uh, during an emergency event. Due to legal reasons, we cannot save this data on our servers, but if you contact us, we'll walk you through the process of retrieving this log from, from your app. How can I get these UDID logs? Well, you simply hold down the account tab on the options screen and you'll be presented with the ability to email yourself the logs. How can I get audio recorded from an, from an emergency? Audio is saved to your phone's uh, file system. By law, we cannot save it on your server. Links for the Android and the iOS. Uh, can I help with phone flare? We wish you would. You know, I'm saying this in all honesty. My son is a very altruistic, kind person. He's done about, in addition to all the beautiful films he's made and all the awards he's won, he's made some really beautiful applications um, in Word. That is to say, Synonymy is a word game that, that is now was the number one word game in Brazil. Um, they want to improve their English, I guess. Um, he also has a, an app for anyone who has Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. You can scan when you go to the grocery store to see if there are any fake sugars uh, in your, the thing that you're thinking about buying. Um, he's done iconic passwords. He's done a whole bunch of things, all for free, all to benefit people to make life easier. So I really hope that you'll join us by just telling people about us. You don't have to add money to Kickstarter. You don't have to do that. So if you would do that for us, we would be very, very grateful. Thank you. Do you take oh, I will. I'll take questions. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, I had the occasion um, to have to walk at night just a few days ago. And I don't know what I was thinking. It was only 8.30. I, don't, I come from New York. I spent a lot of time in New York City. So I, I always get kind of nervous. So I took my phone, and I put my desk plug in there, and I armed the, armed the system. It's not a big walk. I live in the cottages. I was just going to Panera. But um, just in the event that it, no one was around, and if I was afraid, all I would do is just pull my plug out of my phone. That would, well, first I had to arm the system, but that would notify security dispatch here in the villages that I was in trouble. But first, it would notify my husband. It would notify my son who lives in New York. That doesn't do any good. Um, and it would notify maybe one or two friends here in the villages. So that's how it works here. Um, and also the, all the other features, the SOS torch, the multicolored disarm, the check-in time, all of that works as well. How does the check-in time work? Um, what you do is you program a check-in time on the website, uh, on the app. And if your person does not check in at that time, then it sets an alarm to contact you. You, the, the contact person. Yes. So the system is automatically set up with the police in the villages. You don't have to put that as a contact. Correct. Automatic. Correct. In fact, um, um, I'm uh, I'm screening right now all the 800 telephone numbers that uh, are in the system for college campuses because I am so worried. You know, what if one of those numbers got plugged in wrong? So I'm having someone scrub that list and make sure that all the numbers are right. I'm going to tell you the truth. Colleges don't like this. They don't want the responsibility. They don't want the liability. They just don't want it. And um, Penn State actually called me and said, take us off your list. Well, we're going to be talking about that. Why should we take it off the list? Your students may not be safe if they're in the dark and walking home from a class. And I said to her, what kind of emergency system do you have in place? And she said, we have an escort service. Okay. They don't use it. No. I'm sure not. I'm sure not. 
So this is a very innocuous, innocuous way of making your children, grandchildren more safe and yourself more safe. Yes. And then she travels also. But sure. So in any city she would go to, she could get some help? Well, the only thing it doesn't do, outside of a campus and outside of the villages, the 800 that we have logged in, is it doesn't call security. Because we can't call 911. So who would we call um, if she lives in Philadelphia? We have no idea. So it would contact you and say, Mom, I might be in danger, I might have an emergency, and here's where I am. The GPS location would be sent to you, and it's updated every 15 seconds. So it tracks her. So yes, anybody can use this. Yes? What about the surrounding areas of the villages, like the surrounding? Not exactly in the villages, maybe a 15 minutes away from the parking lot. I'm really sorry. I wish we could have done that, um, but just, Doing the Villages was the first community outside of a college campus that we did, and we were so excited. I did it because I live here. <laughs> anyway, I'm really sorry. It would, else, everything else would work. Yes? Um, when you said it automatically connects to security, how? In other words, when you download the app and put in your contact, is security automatically in, in it, or how do you set that up? In the Villages, it is. It is our, the number is, you know how we can't dial 911? Right. We can dial campus dispatch. I mean, our, our village's dispatch. Is that community watch? Community watch. So that number is automatically well, programmed in. Yes, it is. I, I don't think it's community watch, because I think that's a nine to eight to five program. I think it's actually plugged into the police departments here. So. so community watch is 20 yeah. Oh, then it is community watch, please excuse me. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't sure. Yes? Um, back up to someone's question about your 15 minutes outside the villages. Are you saying it would not work for the teachers of calling your, uh, let's say your spouse or no. your friend? It would call, it, no, that would work. The contact would work. That would work. You're it's, just saying it wouldn't contact community watch or whatever security. Correct. And it wouldn't call. It would text. Yeah, text. Yeah. And see, that's what we're trying to cover is all the texting because we don't want to charge you. So we're charging mom. Um, and all the other things, because I think, you know, it, it costs money to, to, to actually text after a certain number. And this, we hope we run up the bill. But, yes? So you're saying, uh, other than college campuses or the villages, uh, if you're outside in an area and it, con and you, it still contacts your contacts people, it doesn't contact emergency, it would be up to one of your contacts to contact the emergency? Uh, yes, it would be up to one of your contacts to contact the emergency. Yeah. You know, it's not fail safe. And what do you think I worry about more than anything? What if something goes wrong and we didn't help you? That's what worries me all the time, night and day. Um, so have a backup system. Everyone should have a backup system. This is just a nice thing to have. Just as something that is there for you. Yes? How long has it been in effect? Since August. Okay. So we're just, it's brand new. Yep. Yep. Um, I think it texts. I don't think it emails. But I'm really sorry. I, for some reason, I don't know the answer to that question exactly. I'm 99% sure it sends you a text because that's where I got my last heart attack. Are there other questions? I really would like to thank you very, very much for inviting me. I was wicked nervous when I first came in the room. But you're so very nice. Thank you very much, Debbie.